Thank you for attending the October 22nd Fisher City Council meeting. Uh, first item is an announcement with regard to pickleball. <laughs> nope. So let's see. Let me make sure I got this right. Yes, pickleball. Yes, pickleball. This and this are going down here. So I'd like to ask Sarah Sanquis, our parks director, to come forward. Share a little bit about some exciting news of uh, some residents who have stepped forward on behalf of uh, city officials. I hope you have some video of the mayor playing pickleball. Do you have, have to. Is there some video we could show? It was a close match. Close match? Yeah. <laughs> it was not that close. It was Brandon's fault. <laughs> no. Come on now, Scott. We're a city of champions. Come on. So Brandon, Brandon let me down. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here just, we go. Just wait five minutes. Um, I'm Lisa Knowles. I'm the president of the Fishers Parks and Recreation Foundation. And um, the, parks, the Park and Recreation Foundation, our mission is to give our community opportunities to support the continuing legacy of world-class parks. So it's a way to connect our community to our parks department and give them some chances to contribute to projects that they really love. Um, so this year, the pickleball courts out at Cynthia M. Park, I don't know if you know, have been super popular. If you've ever been out there, they have paddles lined up for who's playing for hours. It's amazing. Um, I have not ventured into that, but it was fun to watch um, the mayor play and some of our donor. Um, so initially, the Parks Department had a plan to add two more courts this year and then another two in the coming years. <laughs> um, but we had some avid pickleballers that that was not quick enough. That was not soon enough. And so with community enthusiasm and some, I'm going to say skilled pickleball donors, but um, we were able to um, speed up that process and save the city some money too by just having to do it once. So we were able to add four additional courts, um, and they're almost done. I think they're um, just putting the final touches on them. Yeah, and they should be done real soon, and they'll be, they're ready to play. We've heard tons about them. So tonight we just want to thank really quickly, our donors who donated over $1,000, um, and we have some nice certificates for them. So first on our list are Larry and Teresa Amick. Do you guys want to come up? Sure. <laughs> we can keep clapping. And Steve Cage. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great job. All right. And is Dr. K here from Central Indiana Orthopedic? And then um, Terry and Deborah Collins weren't able to attend tonight, but also is Joy Davis here? From um, IU Health and Saxony Hospital. They were also great donors for us this year. So we just want to encourage everyone to head out, enjoy the pickleball courts. Um, maybe the mayor will come play with you, I don't know. But um, <laughs> maybe. Sounds and, like it's an easy win against them, yeah, so you might right? as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We,
Todd? Recognition. Yes. If I could make a side comment about pickleball. Let's start the timer on Brian. <laughs> yeah. Three years ago, the mayor was running uh, for election, and he came out to Britain Falls, where I live, and we're standing there, and he's campaigning, and he said, what can I do to get votes from Britain Falls? And I said, just build a pickleball court. And he said, what's a pickleball court? I do want to say, um, <laughs> the, I, I have to give a lot of compliments to our Parks Department and the Parks Foundation. You know, it was only a few years ago we actually started having a Parks Foundation. Uh, and, and for them to nurture the relationships with folks here in our community, to have folks uh, step forward and contribute money to be a part of our city, to progress the Parks Department, Lisa and the team at the Parks Foundation, thank you for all of your efforts. Sarah, I appreciate your leadership on this and um, look forward to seeing the courts done. And frankly, I think it sets a new bar for where we can go with residents voluntarily deciding to be a part of this broader vision of creating a quality of life here in our city. So it is exciting to see we have a police foundation, we have a parks foundation, we have a fire auxiliary. I mean, all of those demonstrate just the type of the caliber of the community we have here when we mobilize them towards a common vision. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Sarah, you want to come back? Are you coming back up for a recognition of parks donors, or do we just do all that? that? Was, Is I that all? That was the whole thing. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Good. All right. Moving on. Uh, presentations. Nickel Plate Arts Award. <laughs> Leah. Hi, uh, for the record, Leah McGrath, uh, one of the deputy mayors here for the city of Fishers. And I know Councilwoman Coble was at the Nickel Plate Arts event representing the city. I think John Weinbart was there as well and maybe some others. But we have come a long way in our efforts around art and we're just so honored and wanted to present this award to you as the city council tonight to receive the Nickel Plate Arts Emerging Art Award um, this year. And so you can see this here, you can pass it around. Um, but also really exciting for the city of Fishers in the recognition was that the educator of the year, Mr. Jeremiah Fallis, is also from HSE schools and representing really well. So as we look at all the things happening here, we wanted to take a moment to recognize the work that you've done to make this possible and also our educator of the year who is here. I'd like to invite him to come up and say a few words as well and then Councilwoman Copel as well too. Great. So as you said, thank you. My name is Jeremiah Fallis. I'm a social studies teacher at Hamilton Southeastern High School, and I was honored to win the first ever Arts Educator of the Year Award last year, or last month. Um, basically, um, in my spare time, I'm a sculptor. I'm a commissioned artist for Lucasfilm and movie and film and TV, and I also work on movies as a production designer. Last year, I worked on a film that won the Heartland Film Festival Audience Award. So in 2002, I made a club at the school where we kind of studied and discussed classic films. And then over time, we began to make short films. And then we decided about five years ago to try something new, which was to create feature-length films. And the idea was that every year, schools do plays and musicals, but what if we made a movie? And a lot of those student productions use things like pre-existing scripts and costumes and songs, but what we do is we do it all from scratch ourselves. The idea was we have so many talented kids in our building and so many great resources, what if we just pooled them together and we grabbed the best writers, the best artists, the best actors, and we put them together and the kids, they finance the movie, they plan it, they budget it, they location scout, they act, they edit, they write the music, they do the posters, they do the PR, they do all of it. The first year we didn't finish it <laughs> because there's always pitfalls with this, um, but the, for the last four years we've actually finished a, a feature-length film every year completely done by the students. No other high school in the country does this annually, and we were contacted by Indiana University because they were like, how do you do this every year, let alone with high school kids? So now IU's gonna model their program after what we're doing at HSC. And we just started all over. All those kids have gone off. I've got kids at NYU and UCLA and USC studying film, and we started all over again this year on day one with 30 scripts, and we just cast the movie and we start production next week. So. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, you for all your thank Congratulations. Yeah. And that's one, of, I mean, he is uh, one of the main reasons why I think every one of our schools in our district were, were named Gold Star Schools. I, I don't know if I'm misquoting that, but I think every single school, and, and that, 
that is the backbone and foundation of a great city. So thank you for what you do and how you give back to, to our young people. Yes. Cecilia, yes, And go ahead. I had the honor of accepting the Champion of the Art Award for the City of Fishers, and it's just incredible what we are starting to do with, with regard to the arts, the performing arts, and the visual arts. And it is, it is just spectacular. I don't know, Leah, if you can share a little bit about some of the recent updates with our cultural trail and our cultural district destination uh, designation. So as uh, you may recall, we did submit the Nickel Plate District uh, as a statewide cultural district to the Indiana Arts Commission. We have made it through phase one, or well, I'm not sure, I think of it as sort of the first round, um, and we'll be hosting the Art Commission Selection Committee this Wednesday in the Nickel Plate District, actually. So we're really excited and hopeful about that and hope to learn through this process um, either way to help inform the Art Commission that will be established in January. So really excited to keep working toward that. Excellent. Wonderful. It's exciting. So congratulations to the city and to uh, Jeremy. Yep. Excellent. All right, moving on to the Fisher City, uh, Citizens Government Academy graduation, Dan. Good evening, Council. For the record, uh, Dan Damsick, Fishers Parks and Recreation. I am the uh, program manager for the Fishers City Government Academy, uh, which is a 10-week program that gives residents here uh, an inside look at how their local government operates. Uh, one week they can be hanging out with our Parks and Rec Department, checking out new facilities and learning about the role that we try and play here in our community. Uh, another week they could be making sure they're wearing cruddy shoes uh, to walk out to the wastewater treatment plant and find out a little bit about what happens after you turn your faucet on and off. <laughs> um, and then another week they'll be uh, visiting with Judge Hankey and uh, talking about his philosophy and what his role is uh, in the justice system and, and here in Fishers locally. Uh, this evening I have the honor of presenting uh, the graduates from our first ever uh, Fishers uh, City Government Academy summer session, uh, which we partnered with uh, <coughs> Britain Falls on. Uh, so we have uh, 14 graduates here this, uh, that uh, went through the program. Not all of them can make it tonight, um, but I want to make sure that their names are on record because it is a significant time uh, commitment and they're phenomenal examples of people who just want to get to know their community better and get involved. Uh, graduates have gone on to do a lot of things, serve on city council, uh, co-found Launch Fishers, just a ton of stuff and the, the program means a lot to us. So with that, uh, Council President Zimmerman, if you don't mind joining Mayor Fadness down here. Uh, graduates, as I read your name off, if you don't mind coming up for your customary congratulatory handshake, uh, <laughs> we'll do that, uh, we'll get a quick picture and then we'll meet back out in the lobby for a couple other pictures and just some follow-up. So, without further ado, uh, if you can come up, if you're here and join us, uh, Marilyn Aceby, Catherine Thompson, Terry Thompson, Eric W. Smith, Gary Angeline, Lenny Scott, Connie Lightfoot, Tracy Erickson, Sam Malone, Larry Rash, Mickey Luth, Gary Van Gordon, Dan Critch, and Paul Taylor. Ashley, would you mind grabbing a picture for us? Our city government academy class. Leah, I was wondering if you and Jeremy would want to come up also to get a picture with the mayor with the awards. You weren't there yet. I went. Why don't you? You should get up there, hey, too. Go, go on up there yeah. with you. Go on up there. Get, get your picture with him. Make sure you get that boot in the picture. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. All right, moving on to the Finance Committee report. Well, John was going to give the update. Uh, certainly. Uh, Councillor Stoller could not be with us uh, for our budget and finance when she is our chair. Um, and so I, I uh, kind of took over around the meeting for on October the 10th, and we discussed a number of topics, um, some that uh, two items that were passed, item 10 on the agenda tonight, which is request the approval of the 2019 Fisheries budget. We recommended that to approval. Thank you very much. Uh, Nonprofit committee report, Pete. Thanks, Todd. Um, again, the Nonprofit committee, which consisted of myself, uh, Cecilia Koval, and Brad Bremer, uh, met again this year to go ahead and, and put out some money, which was so graciously set aside in our budget. I, I want to remind everybody on this not-for-profit and the three folks who are on the committee with me, you know, we're not a foundation, we're not a trust, we're not a, you know, it's not our job to distribute tax money back out to non, you know, not-for-profit groups. However, you know, with uh, a direction that we have some money in the budget and we feel that making sure some of those folks who are out in our community affecting a lot of residents, in other words, it's substantive, okay, and, and it will have an impact was really what guided our decisions in terms of this budget. So uh, I'm gonna read the names of the folks that, that got funds from us this year. There was a lot of folks who, who went ahead and applied again, but again, we wanted to make sure that we were being impactful and substantive as it related back to the taxpayers who were actually, you know, that's where this money's coming from. So uh, without further ado, and I'll read the amounts as well, um, the funds uh, that we've distributed for YMI, which is Youth Mentoring Initiative, uh, $48,200. Uh, Janus Development, $12,000. The HSE Foundation, $26,300. Hamilton County YAP, $65,000. And Connor Prairie, $100,000. That is my report for this evening, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions or comments from Council? All right. Move on to the consent agenda. Todd, I make a motion to approve uh, items 7A and 7B from the agenda. Okay, motion by David, second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. And one abstention. <coughs> Pete is the abstention. All right, moving on to uh, regular agenda. Uh, item 8, R102218F. Request to approve Third Amendment to Economic Development Agreement. Thank you, members of the council. For the record, Brandon Dickinson, Director of uh, Economic Development. So back in 2016, the city entered into an economic development agreement with uh, Central Indiana Orthopedics and um, part of that agreement, we outlined a number of details including number of jobs, uh, size of the investment, and a timeline for uh, the project. And so uh, as the uh, CIO team got kind of dug into the design, they found some efficiencies, um, and then we're kind of at this season of the year where it actually makes a little bit more monetary sense to wait until you start building um, on the other side of winter. So here you have a, uh, a couple of uh, details for this amendment, one of them is to extend the date for construction and completion by uh, a calendar year. And then also uh, the original economic development agreement said that they would build a building no less than 40,000 square feet. Based on design efficiencies, they believe they'll be able to uh, achieve their vision with a 35,000 square foot building. So before you today is an amendment to, um, to rectify those things. The, 
construction timeline as well as a uh, slightly smaller um, building. With that, I would uh, request that we approve uh, the resolution, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, we have questions or comments I, from I've council. Got a, I've got a question for Brandon. As I recall reading this last week and I got the consent agenda, the original agreement was written for a building not to be under 40,000 square feet or something to that nature. Not and less that, than, yeah. Yeah, not less than. So now we moved it down to 35. Did that not less than language accompany that? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because it wasn't in our packet written that way. So right. It looked like I could build a two-foot square building if they really wanted to, yeah. which I don't think was really the intent of this. Right, so not I less than 35. Sure that, that language followed forward. And I would anticipate it'll land somewhere right around 35,000 at this point now that they've kind of designed it out. And if there's no other questions, I'll go ahead and make a motion to suspend the rules and approve on first reading. Yeah, let's, any other, any questions or comments from the rest of council? I'll second. All right. uh, motion to suspend by Pete. Second by, did you second John. that? Second by John. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion. motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Pete. Second. Second by Rich. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to R1021188. This is the project for uh, the BW development project on the North Ellipse. Uh, this is the lot just west of the library that is currently um, the uh, parking lot. This project agreement states that in its original form that we would close on the property with the developer by October 31st. Again, as we kind of got into uh, design and um, details, we needed just a little extra time. So this amendment is just basically a two month amendment and it's stating that um, we will close on this project no later than uh, December 31st of this year. Uh, the BW project is still planned to um, get under construction yet here this year and uh, we hope to have some exciting announcements uh, very, very shortly coming about some exciting tenants to call downtown Fisher's home. So with that, I would uh, request that we uh, approve the amendment and, um, and also change the rules to allow for that to occur. Okay. Any questions or comments from council? Do we, need to Do we need to suspend rules on this? No. Yes? Okay. All right. Hmm. Didn't say it. Make a motion to suspend the rules. Uh, you don't need suspension. Was this a Right, Chris? No suspension. Resolution. Just resolution. Yeah. My apologies, no. All right. Just go ahead and make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Eric. Second. Second by Rich. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. And I'm one abstaining. abstention. Two, Two abstentions. So Pete and John are abstaining. Motion passes. <clears throat> Moving on to 091718A, request to approve the 2019 City of Fishers budget. Mr. Mayor? Scott, for the record, Scott Fadness, Mayor, City of, the Fish City of Fishers, uh, also Lisa Bradford, our controller, is here tonight to answer any questions you may have. As a follow up to uh, the budget hearing that we had. At the last meeting, uh, I would just reiterate that we had our public hearing at the last council meeting. Uh, the budget has been properly uh, noticed per state law. And tonight before you, we're asking for final adoption of the fiscal year 2019 fiscal uh, budget. Uh, if you notice, there is an additional document, I believe, Chris, in the, in the budget uh, where we have um, uh, a petition uh, to remonstrate against the budget and we followed the state procedures associated with that and there's a response as well. Uh, so we would ask that you uh, adopt that as well with the budget tonight, adhering to all state uh, laws associated with the budget process moving forward. With that, I'd be happy to entertain any uh, questions that the city council may have and uh, would ask for your support in our uh, proposed budget for fiscal year 2019. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any uh, questions or comments from council? I, I want to clarify uh, what you asked for is if a motion is made to approve, do we need to note that we're uh, passing it with this remonstrance? You can, it's more or less an administrative process. So Indiana law supplies a format where 10 or more taxpayers can submit a timely yep. budget objection. That objection was submitted to the city. We provided a response to that. That'll get submitted to DLGF along with our budget submission. So if you can just acknowledge it with the passing of the budget, that'll be fine. I'll make a motion to approve the budget uh, as duly noted that there has been a remonstrance filed and we have given an answer, so duly noted by council. Second. 
Motion by Pete, second by Rich. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Motion you for the passes. support. Thank you. Moving on to 10211C. For the record, Lisa Bradford, City Controller. The amendment before you relates to the North of North project and the local income tax pledge. Uh, this amendment uh, basically amends the existing pledge to allow for the creation of a junior reserve account, uh, which can be funded by a reserve fund surety. Basically, this is more of a procedural step as we're going to permanently finance the uh, bond anticipation note that we did for the North of North project, also known now as Spark Fishers. And so this is neat, step is needed as the garage is complete, but the building's not yet 100% complete. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? We will need to suspend the rules, so to Motion move to forward. suspend the rules and approve on first reading. Second. Okay, motion by Pete to suspend, second by John. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to approve. Passes. Uh, motion by Pete, second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right, moving on to R102218B. All right, this uh, before you is approves the issuance of redevelopment district bonds related to fire station 93. Um, as we have discussed in some previous meetings, there is a significant capital need for some fire stations and this will um, bond will finance either the complete renovation or a substantial renovation of fire station 93. there any questions? All right. Are there any questions or comments from council? Well, the comments I'll make just quickly is I want to thank certainly the mayor and the staff for going and taking the entire council on a tour, uh, not only of, of kind of the city assets that we've had uh, uh, been approving all along. We got to see some of the finished work done at the public works and et cetera, et cetera, but actually toured us through uh, some of these fire stations and, and you know, not that, that it was a bad thing when they were built, but were completely different you know, municipal organization that we were when they were built, and they are in uh, serious health decline, and they are not really a great place for our uh, public health folks and our safety folks to work in. So I think that really showed an open eye to certainly council that it was needed, and it's not, you know, one of those things that we take lightly when we ask taxpayers to pay for municipal buildings, but in this case, I think everybody would agree with us if they went through that process that you want to keep those firemen safety. And I'm the first one to tell you they're an exp expensive insurance policy, but they're a great one. And we have one of the greatest organizations in the state, uh, thanks to our chief, Steve Arus and his staff. But um, those are my comments, but I did want to thank the mayor and the staff for going ahead and doing that. Uh, and I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve unless there's other comments. Any other questions or comments from council? Okay, so motion by Pete to approve. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. R102218C. Um, this resolution before you approves a lease between the Redevelopment Authority, the Lessor, and the Redevelopment Commission as the leasee. And basically, this will allow lease rentals to be used to pay uh, debt service on bonds of the Redevelopment Authority. This bond is for the Nichols Plate Trail, but in addition, several road projects, such as 126th and Ford Drive. Uh, South Street reconstruction, Allisonville Road widening from River Glen to 126 uh, pavement rehab, and Cumberland Road rehab from 106 to 116th Street. Thank you, Lisa. Any uh, questions or comments from council? I'd like to make a comment here. Um, I, I appreciate that we need all of these things kind of rolled up and issued these bonds. I guess I, I want us to make sure that I know we're in great financial position today, but from what I'm hearing from the investment world, we've already started hedging for the next downturn, which is expected to start next year in 12 to 20 months. And I just want to, you know, how do we fare if employment is, if unemployment is 10%, and income, our income, tax income is down 20%. As we move forward, I have no problem with these today. I just want us to be aware 
of what we could be facing in just a few years. So a couple couple points to that. I, th I think your um, your concerns are warranted, and that's why I appreciate you being on the finance committee as we look out into the future. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, Lisa and her team does a wonderful job with is if you look at our uh, CAFR, if you look at our budget, we have certain rules and procedures and policies we, we <coughs> adhere to in terms of debt structure, debt load, debt per capita we're always looking at, uh, adequate cash reserve balances, overlapping debt structures, things of that nature, which frankly, the discipline that we've had adhering to best management practices in the financial sector has given us the highest rated bond uh, rating that you can get as a, as a municipality. Um, but that's the, the price we have to pay to keep that is vigilance. We have to continue yes. to monitor that. And I, and I do agree with you. One of the things that uh, with this debt issuance, and I think a general conversation, is uh, what, I, what I am proud of is that the investments that this council has greenlighted to date have been on transformative or long-term capital projects. This is not a community that deficit spends for the sake of deficit spending on operational expenses. We're talking about a police station that'll be here for 50 years, 70 acres of waterfront property on Geist for a new park, fire stations, road projects. These are things that if you're going to issue debt, you want them for those types of projects. The, the assets will outlive the, the debt. But um, to your point, I, I agree wholeheartedly that we need to continue to monitor and, and frankly, um, continue to try to be the lowest tax rate of any large municipality in the state of Indiana. That puts us in a strong financial position moving forward. Yeah, I, was just, I would just echo that when I say, you know, obviously if you guys have seen when we look at the fiscal plan, we're not just looking at this year and we're not just looking oh, yeah. at next year. We're looking, you know, three to four years down the road and hopefully with that you start to anticipate those perceived downturns and if those are, then you can start, you know, making those changes here you know, a year before it comes to fruition of some form of economic downturn, and you can make some changes before you get behind, you know, if that comes to fruition with an economic downturn. Lisa, if, if I just some context, what's, what's in our general fund as of right now? I think we're anticipated, don't quote me, hopefully on the end of budget year 18 to be at about 15 million in- 15 million, what, 15? and what is, our, what is our policy on how much we it's, should have? 50% of next year's anticipated property tax. And how much is that? That would be about 12, 12 and a half. So, so usually we always significantly have a surplus in excess of our required cash reserve uh, balance. So, so whether a storm, we have significant reserves. Yes, we have sustainers. a significant reserve policy build up already, but then we also usually carry an amount above our reserve policy sure. and have been for the past couple of years. Just to kind of provide some context, other communities yeah. no. to the west of us, to the east of us, to the north of us, <laughs> to the south of us, don't have this level of funds right. laid, set aside for those right. rainy days. Right. And Correct? that is, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve. Any other? Yeah. Second. Well, oh. that's a good point, John. I think uh, our, our cash reserve requirement is much more stringent than some of the other. Yeah. And I will, I will agree with Selena. It's something we just got, we got to watch. You know, the economy, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to go up and up forever. We're, we're in great shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just want us to be cognizant of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm motion to approve. May I make or, a point? No. No. Uh, no, there's no public hearing. Motion yeah. by, it was a motion, oh. originally motioned by John. John. Okay. I seconded that. Second okay. by Eric, or Pete. I mean, Pete. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to R102218D. All right, this is essentially a, a procedural step. Um, you need to, to ask the passage of the previous uh, resolution. This is needed to update the economic development plan for the consolidated Fishers I-69 economic development area to include the projects referenced in the bond previously. No questions, I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah, any, any questions or comments from council? Okay, motion by Pete, second by Selena. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to R102218E. Um, the resolution before you is to uh, appropriate additional uh, sewer wastewater funds. Uh, during the budget process for 2018, we uh, put some uh, software costs all to the general fund, which should have been paid 
uh, a sum out of sewer and to make sure the sewer utility pays its fair share, we're doing an additional appropriation to make sure they cover their software costs. Any questions or comments from council? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Eric, second by Pete. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to 102218B. All right, the item before you uh, approves the issuance of taxable economic development revenue bonds and the lending of these proceeds to the uh, Town Hall Building Corp. This is pursuant to the land acquisition agreement from August of 2018 uh, related to the downtown project. Okay, uh, Any before we do that, any questions or comments from council? Make motion sure we got to suspend. suspend. Yeah, motion by Pete to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Second by Selena. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Pete. Second. Second by Selena. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thought all uh, any, that. Uh, one abstention. Any nays? All right. Motion passes. One abstentions. David. Okay. David. David. Yeah. All right. 102218A. All right, uh, the item for you is again another procedural step approving the lease between the Town Hall Building Corporation and the Redevelopment Commission and then pledging a uh, local income tax to uh, payment of the lease rentals as a security related to the ac land acquisition. Okay. Any questions or comments from Council? Motion to suspend. Motion to suspend by Pete. Second by Selena. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any motion? motion to approve. Motion by Pete. Second. Second by Selena. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All abstain motion. again. And then David abstains. Moving on to R102218G. All right. This item before you uh, simply introduces the uh, preliminary determination related to fire station 91 for a bond issuance related mm -hmm. to the um, construction of a new headquarters as we mentioned previously with our fire stations they're in um, drastic need of some very strong capital rehabilitation um, so this bond will go for fire station 91 which is our headquarters um, if there are no questions from council i will step aside as this one does require a public hearing Okay, um, questions or comments from council? Okay, I'll open it up for public hearing. If you wish to speak, have questions, uh, step forward, state your name and address for the record. You will have three minutes. Please keep it to this particular topic. Mike's coming forward. I didn't want to disappoint you. Yes. <laughs> I was waiting for this, Mike. For the record, my name is Michael Colby. I live at 7105 Coldike Drive here in Fishers. And a question I have on this particular item, it's a bond for the uh, fire station 91. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard the last council meeting, uh, the mayor, I think he said that this bond was going to be for both the fire station and the nickel plate. No, is that, was there a change? Is there a bond separate for that that's? Yeah, so uh, can I add something to that item? One of which was issuing the bond for uh, the nickel plate as well as several work projects. That was a prior agenda item. And then we had a separate bond issue for station 92, and now we're on to the bond issue for station 91. So the R102218B, the resolution approving issuance of bond, um, and it, it was it was fire station, but no nickel plate, and then you got this one, which is R one zero zero two two eight G, which is another bond for another fire station. I guess I'm missing where the bond is for the nickel plate. That's the item number thirteen. Item number thirteen, but that wasn't that was not presented when the bond was presented. I didn't hear it anyway. I sat in the back and listened specifically for, for nickel plate and I didn't hear that. Maybe I'm getting old and deaf. Yes, the driver was specifically mentioned. All right, okay. It was. All right, yeah. thank you. That's all right, thank you, Mike. 
Anyone else we can, wishing to uh, step forward and speak? You state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes to speak. If not, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Motion to approve. Second. Um, I think this is a. Yes, this, so this is just a motion this to is have just a, the first, have first reading. First reading. Determination yep. by have yeah. the second determination at the special council meeting on November 5th. Okay. All right, moving on to uh, 102218 d Good evening for the record, Ross Hillary, the City of Fishers Planning and Zoning Department. Uh, before you tonight, we have our first annexation. Uh, petition is for the Ritchie Reserve PUD. Uh, the property is located at 7877 East 106th Street. Uh, Real America uh, seeks to annex two lots located totally um, on approximately 12.4 acres. Uh, the property will begin the rezoning process at the November 2018 uh, Plan Commission. Uh, with that, staff recommends that City Council holds a combined first and second reading and a public hearing. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I'll step aside for that public hearing. All right, I'll go ahead and open this up for a public hearing. If anyone wishes to speak on this topic, step forward, state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes to speak. With no one stepping forward, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Have any questions or comments from Council? I have first reading. First and second reading, I guess. All right. Uh, real quick, yes. Ross, I just want to make sure procedurally, because I've had some questions from residents on this. So November would be the plan commission. And then do you have an anticipated date for the council meeting for the, the project itself? I would probably see it coming to the January meeting if I look at the timeline correctly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on to 102218E. Uh, the next annexation in front of you is the stations at Fisher's District. Uh, the property is located at 9712 East 116th Street, uh, previously known as the Charlie Key or the Stations PUD property. Thompson Thrift uh, seeks to annex this one lot for approximately 1.67 acres. Uh, similar to the previous annexation, the property will be uh, beginning the rezoning process at the November 2018 Plan Commission. Um, with that, staff recommends a combined first and second reading uh, and a public hearing as well. All right, I'll go ahead and open up for public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this topic, step forward, state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes to speak. With no one stepping forward, I'll go ahead and close public hearing. Any questions or comments from council? I have first reading and second reading. Okay, first and second reading. Moving on to 102218F. Uh, the final annexation petition in front of you tonight is for the Worstler property. Uh, the property is located at 15040 and 15050 East 126th Street, uh, near the intersection of Southeastern Parkway and 126. Uh, Gary Worsler seeks to annex the two lots, uh, which is approximately 1.72 acres. Uh, the property was given a favorable recommendation for rezoning at the October 18th <laughs> Planning Commission meeting. Um, Council will see this uh, next month for that rezoning. With that, uh, staff recommends uh, combined first and second reading and a public hearing. All right, I'll open up for public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this topic, step forward, state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes to speak. With no one stepping forward, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Any questions or comments from council? I have first and second reading. All right, move forward. 102218G. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Megan Schaefer with the Planning and Zoning Department. The item before you is for an amendment to the Planning and Zoning Fee Schedule. So this, this amendment um, was brought about by the updates to the Unified Development Ordinance that Council approved back in August. And so we are just updating some of the language on the permit types in our fee schedule. I'd like to clarify that we're not changing the amount of any fees and we're not adding any additional fees. We're simply just changing the language on some of the permit types. So we ask that you hold first, second, and third reading and approve the ordinance, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have on that. Any questions or comments from council? Motion to suspend. Second. Motion by Pete, second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to approve. Motion by Pete, second, second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 
All right, any unfinished or new business? Nothing? All right, we're going to open up for a community input uh, session. You can uh, speak on any topic. You will have a three-minute limit. You need to state your name and address for the record. I do ask that Fisher's residents uh, speak first unless before somebody else that does not live and reside in Fisher's. So if you would, if you want to speak, uh, you can, you have three minutes. It is not a back and forth dialogue. So you can ask questions, we'll write those down, and if somebody has a specific response, they'll be able to provide that for you. So we'll open it up. Anybody wishing to speak, step forward. I don't see anyone stepping forward, so I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and motion to, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Pete. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>